Are you trying to remotely access a Linux box via SSH? Well, I'm Don Pazette, edutainer at IT Pro TV, and in this Linux how-to, I'll show you how to make it work. Connecting to a Linux box via SSH is usually pretty easy. Many distros that are out there actually include SSH installed and activated right out of the box. For example, let me switch over here to a CentOS box. So this is a CentOS 8 machine, and I did a default installation with it. It, by default, is running the SSH daemon, and it has the firewall open to allow SSH communications to pass through. If I were to drop into a terminal on it, uh, I could take a look at, for example, firewall-cmd dash dash list dash all and I would see in here that TCP port 22 or SSH is already opened up on its firewall and if I were to do a sudo systemctl status sshd I could see that the SSH daemon is active and running so that means on a Red Hat CentOS Fedora box they're ready for that SSH connection out of the box we just have to connect it's a little bit different though for systems like Ubuntu Ubuntu doesn't enable SSH out of the box, so we need to turn that on. Fortunately, it's pretty easy. First off, we're going to drop into our terminal. So I'll hit my super key and just type T-E-R-M to get to my terminal. And then from here, I'm going to start by installing the SSH daemon. To do that, we run sudo to get elevated privileges. And then we call apt, which is the installation program. We type install because we want to install some software and then SSH because that's the software we want to install. And when I press enter, it'll ask for my password. I'll punch that in and then it finds the package and gets it installed. Now the package is installed, but it's not running. That's my next step. So I will say sudo systemctl and that's the command we use to talk to systemd. It's what drives all the services in the background. Enable, that means I want this service to start when my computer starts up. Dash dash now, that means I want it to start right now, <laughs> and then SSH, that's the name of the service that I'm starting. So that's gonna fire that up, and now SSH is up and running. I need to do one more thing, and that's to open up SSH on the firewall. Ubuntu uses UFW as its firewall by default, so if I do a sudo UFW status, I can see that it's enabled, and it looks like I'm letting my web server through, but I'm not allowing SSH. So I need to say sudo UFW allow, 22 forward slash TCP. That's transmission control protocol port 22. That's the port that SSH uses. With that added to my UFW, now I should be able to SSH into this box. Now actually getting connected into the box is identical whether you're running Ubuntu or Red Hat, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, whatever. All we really need to know is the IP address and then a valid user account. I'm gonna run IP ADDR on this Ubuntu box to find the address. So I can see that it is 10.0.12.146. In theory, I should be able to jump over to just about any other machine and connect to it. We connect with an SSH client by running SSH followed by our username. My username on that box happens to be dpazette. I'll say at, and then the IP address or host name of that box. I don't have a host name on mine, so I'll just use the IP, 10.0.12.146. After that, we can press enter, and the first time we connect, it's going to ask if we trust the server we're connecting to. It gives us a little uh, fingerprint. Uh, you could go and validate that against the certificate on the server. In my case, it's brand new, so I trust it. I will say yes, and then it's going to ask me for my password. I'll punch in my password, and now, I can see that I'm logged into Dpazette Ubuntu. I'm now remotely connected out of the system via SSH. If I were to run the who command, I could see that I'm logged in on PTS slash one, and it shows my remote IP of 10.0.222.223. That's my remote connection. The other one here is my local connection. So easy enough to get connected in there. This would be identical for a Red Hat system or others. I would just provide my name followed by the IP address. There is one other variation though. In some cases, you may have SSH set up for certificate-based authentication. If that's the case, when connecting, I would add a little bit more to this line. I would say SSH, a username, at, and then the IP address or host name. And I would follow that up with a dash I, and I would point to wherever that certificate file was. So if I had uh, you know, a file in my local directory called certificate.pem or, or whatever, I would specify that file that would be given to you by your administrator. 
After that, you would connect up just like before, except it likely wouldn't ask for a password. It would automatically let you in because your certificate would be authenticating you. All right, well, in this how-to, we got a chance to see how we would configure SSH to allow us to remotely connect securely to a Linux box. Thanks for watching this Linux how-to video. Check out the playlist below for more Linux videos. And don't forget to subscribe to the IT Pro TV YouTube channel.